Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com and that's my website. If you want to buy a cassette that maybe I'm featuring here or want to buy cassettes in general from me, go to CassetteComeback.com like it's listed down there in the description where you can buy cassettes and usually I have a banner at the end like this which says where you can buy the cassettes. I'm just saying this because I'm getting a lot of people in comments lately asking where they can buy the cassettes from or how much are they. It's, it's all there, ladies and gents, you know, just go to the website, it's all there. Right, and speaking of websites, I've spoke about it a few times, but I do have a Canadian website run by, run by the wonderful Mr. Tony Cruz, and he got some interesting cassettes in recently because we don't share stock, we're on different sides of the Atlantic. It's just not plausible for us to ship stock between ourselves because of the, the cost involved. But he got some cassettes and I said, right, I want to look at some of these because they're really interesting. And I've got them here and I'm going to have a look at them today. We're going to have a nice little long one. So let's start at the bottom and work our way up, shall we? The first one is this, the last of the line Memorex DB. Now, Memorex do get a fair bit of stick because of their early tapes. But, you know, I've done videos about Memorex saying, look, from the mid 80s when they went to be made by either Saihan or SKC, but not by Memorex anymore, they were good, very good. So this is the last of the line DB. And uh, let's have a look. This one is Chinese made. So that's what the back looks like. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at this one. Now, Continuing almost with the Memorex theme, but not. We'll look at this one. The Scotch 3M Screamer. And I like this. I've been looking at this. This is really good. This is like, um, I don't know if it's tongue-in-cheek or um, whether it was done by interns or young people or whatever. It's just funny because if you read it, it goes, Warning, prolonged exposure to loud music may cause hearing loss. Yeah, that's how bad this is. And then I love this at the back, the graphs, you know. The cheapo versus the screamer, you know, it's like, yeah, let's call it cheapo, love it. And it's like, uh, presenting the screamer, different type of tape with a face of it, or made, made for the way you like to hear. Offering short recordings, yeah. Recommended usage, everything. Yeah, I, I, I like that. You could always imagine some long haired sort of 60s, rocker type just designing this and going yeah play it loud you know the distorted font so yeah the memory it's linked there is well we'll we'll see that when we open it up then another strange one uh, lg and you know lg super high performance shp now as far as i can tell this is a south american tape because everything's in english and spanish but like I said, I don't, you know, it says Korea, but I think this is South American because I think this particular one, we, we bought them from, from South America. But um, yeah, we'll have a look at this one. Now, these are more interesting. This one is Studio Dynamics SHD1, super high density ferric oxides, normal bias from standard magnetics. Now, I've looked on the internet, I can't find anything about this. I can't find another picture of this cassette. Anyway, if we look on the back, it says Standard Magnetics, Toronto. So, yeah, I, I can't find anything much about that one. And then finally, this one. Now, Akai cassettes are hard enough to find, but an Akai Type 3? And again, if we look at the back of this, it says PSD Vancouver. So this is another Canadian cassette. But let's have a look at this itself, right? The tape itself looks like a typical sort of, you know, late 70s shell. Apart from this, if we look here, look, it says, oh, I can't focus on it. Get all these out of the way. There we go. Made in the USA. So this is... The shell, at least, is made in the USA. And the actual tape says PSD Vancouver. And if we look inside, it tells us a little bit about the GX heads. That's the GX3 head and, you know, 17 and a half years of continuous 24 hour per day, per, 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 24 hours per day use. That's 150,000 hours of play. That's uh, it's good do. And they've got it 
again on the inside but in French prefer a boggy standard J card but yeah a type 3 with a blue leader now I have had a little play with this one and uh, I've compared it to the Sony Fecker FECR no it doesn't calibrate anywhere near that and it also doesn't to the BASF ferrochrome now bearing in mind again I don't have any decks with the type 3 setting so I've been trying to bias this up as a type 1 at 120 microseconds and to be fair it, it did a good job at that but so all I can think is that maybe the tape in this uh, the blue leader it, this is an Agfa ferrochrome rebrand but made for a Japanese company in Canada it's it's a strange one it's a strange one but we'll leave this case like that because if we go to the studio dynamics again which is a different company um, in Toronto as opposed to Vancouver but the thing about this is this looks like a type zero doesn't it but again this here I like look where is it made in Canada at least the shell is made in Canada and if we look at the two cases that the Akai and this came in they're the same case again made in Canada made in Canada so they're the same case and if we look at the studio magnetics like I say it's just a plain J card and that's what it says but like I say the shell made in Canada I've never seen the shell made in Canada uh, and like I say I can't find any reference to this anywhere on the internet but again blue leaders on it um, could it be Agatha inside there as well again just speculating so we'll look at those two now let's get some dirty unwrapping done let's have a look at the LG SHP first Now, LG, yeah, we know it's go it was Gold Star and they merged with Lucky and they became Lucky Gold Star. But I like Gold Star cassettes. I've never had a bad Gold Star cassette. And that that is a really pretty looking cassette. That's that's nice. Let's get that out of the way. That's a nice looking cassette. It's got different coloured reels there. It's got different coloured, sorry, different coloured reels and hubs. You know, it's, uh, you know, position normal, typo one. So, yeah, this is this is definitely, and on the back, yeah, it's got it written in English. But that's a really pretty cassette, that. I like that one. Let's, uh, let's give it a wind on. And, right, stripey lead. You see, these remind me of SKC leaders, but let's give it a little wind on. Have a look at the tape in that. That's a really nice rich chocolate brown. Like I say, I uh, I like LG and Gold Star cassettes. They're not as common as I thought they would be. Because LG and Gold Star Electronics have always been pretty common. At least in the UK. I mean, I, I remember having a Gold Star television back in the 90s. It was a good TV. Um, yeah. So I'm surprised there's not more, but there isn't. But that's a really pretty cassette. That. Let's have a look at the just some plain white labels to go with it and a pretty standard whoops oh dear oh dear a pretty standard thin j card but no it's a it's a very little very pretty little cassette that i like that one and if, it, if it's got anything performance wise to do with other gold star cassettes i've had it should be a pretty good performer so we'll start that one there now the Scotch Screamer. I don't really want to tear this package in because it's uh, it's really cool. I like I like the attitude of it. Um, sorry, this one is 1990. So, uh, so oh, my fingernail works. Go and slit his face up, and there we go, right across the mouth. So, what does this remind you of? Well look at the hubs look at the style of shell yeah it reminds me of the uh 
the Memorex DBSI clown cassette. And incidentally, it's DBSI in Europe, but in America it's DBS. I haven't got an American DBS. I don't know if the tape's different. Maybe slightly better tape than the European one. I don't know. But anyhow, but you can certainly see that. Uh, yeah, these two bear a striking resemblance. Uh, both SKC. I mean, that's got a little black retainer. That's yellow. But, they've, you know, they've got to be SKC. If we look at the, yeah, I mean, if we look at the leaders on them, we've got the single blue line leader. And the tapes, very, very similar colour. So I think this is the Scotch version of the clown cassette. Amazing what a slip sheet can do. But I like that. Again, it, it's like in music, something doesn't necessarily have to be amazing to appeal to me. Sometimes just it being different, being its own thing is good enough to take it away from the norm. And I like how this looks. This is a really appealing looking cassette. And I mean, I know children would probably like this cassette as well. And let's have a look at that. You know, you know, even though they've gone really plain on the stickers, very plain stickers, and that has just got to be just about the most boring J card I've ever seen. It's, yeah. It didn't even bother putting anything there. Shame, all the, all the design sort of went into the marketing hype, so it seems, and the slip sheet. But we'll see how that one performs. And then finally, a proper Memorex, the, uh, the last of the line DB. Now, again, Memorex are known for being fancy with the slip sheets. And again, this is a very nice looking cassette. This is nice looking. It's not plain. It's not over the top. It's just a nice looking cassette. Now, let's have a look at these hubs because normally when you think of biggish square hubs, you normally think of LG Gold Star. Are these the same style? It's hard to see. I need to put something white behind it. Just bear with me a second. Let's grab this. You see, they're not the same. These are more rounded. These a more square and like I said this one says made in China and the shells are different on these so I don't think this is SKC I think the, uh, sorry um, LG the, the shells are different the hubs are different um, let's have a look at the tape in this though because like I say even though it's Chinese made late Memorex to me I've always performed superb now that is a very dark for tight one that to me, smacks of cobalt doping already. So, uh, we might have to push this one a bit. But, again, that's the stickers. Very plain. Very boring J-card. I mean, like I say, the, uh, this time, it was all about the price because the set was dying. And uh, But at least I made an effort with the slip sheet because I think that is a very pretty looking cassette. So, to recap... I'm going to have a look at all of these now. Might be a long video, but what the heck, what else am I doing today? Not a lot. So let's have a look at all of these, get them fired up and see if we've got any decent performers in them. And if we have, I'm going to have to get onto Tony to see if I can get some for my web store. <laughs> Okay, so before we start, I'm just going to talk about the music I use in these demonstrations. The aim of these demonstrations isn't to give you amazing musical bliss. It's not. You can't. There's only so much you can get that's royalty free. And most of it is royalty free for a reason. It just isn't good enough to be sold regularly. So it's given away for free. And you've got to bear that in mind. Now, the thing is, yeah, you could take a tape and you could play an amazing song on it and it could be a bad tape but because the song's amazing you think oh wow that's really good that I like that and likewise you could take a terrible song 
and play it on a really good tape and think, ugh, I don't like that tape. So the point isn't to make your ears come alive with the wonders of music. It's to give you a frame of reference. I play you the source and then I play you the tape. It might be a crap song, but you can hear the difference between the source and the tape. And that's the whole point of it. So today I picked some from the YouTube audio library and we're going to start out with the Akai. Now my deck, in fact none of my decks, can bias type 3 properly. So I'm just going to do this as a regular type 1 at 120 microsecond. As such I expect the top end to be duller than the source. But that's how it goes. Doing it at 70 microseconds doesn't make any difference from what I can see. So let me just fast forward this on a bit. Let it calibrate. So today's tunes from the YouTube audio library are not my usual electronic or synth. They're sort of like country guitar-y. So, you know, just for a change, you can have a listen. I don't think they're particularly good tunes, but the aim is, like I say, so that you can listen to what the difference between the source and the tape is. Now I'm going to turn this one down a bit because this is a ferrochrome and I don't want it to peak over zero. So we're going to do it at this level. Okay, this first one is called Creeping Spiders. Yeah, so that performed about expected as a type 1, which is a type 3. But the important thing is, it didn't shed, and it does work. And I didn't hear a particular large amount of dropouts. That song itself actually sounded quite distorted in the bass to begin with. But yeah, the, the high end isn't there. But that's why you're not, not, that's not the reason to buy this cassette. The reason to buy this cassette is that you're a cassette collector, and this is a American made Akai Type 3, which makes it possibly one of the rarest tapes you could possibly ever want. The fact that it does actually record stuff is a bonus. And on top of that, if you have a deck that can record Type 3, I'm sure it'll sound a lot better. But yeah, I'm pleased with how that turned out. Even though that was, that was peaking a bit hotter than I wanted it to, I'm pleased how that turned out. So, let's go on to another extremely rare tape. Let's go on to this standard magnetic switch looks like a tight one if you look at this right and and turn this sticker red kind of looks like the sticker which was on the guardians of the galaxy also mixtape doesn't it same sort of style as far as i can tell these are professionally made this isn't a homemade thing and the j card certainly isn't but the main thing about this is that bit the made in canada i can't think of many other cassettes which boast being made in canada 
The only downside would be this turns out to be type zero. So let's whack it in there. Let's see what happens. Oops. Right, this is an interesting song we've got next. It's called Bird Therapist. I didn't listen to all of it, but uh, I've got a feeling it, it, it's not a great one. But like I say, let's see how it compares between the tape and the source. Okay, let's turn up a bit. Good grief. Don't think I could listen to all that song to the end, but again, you could hear that apart from the hiss, this isn't a type zero. This made a nice little copy of the source. Um, didn't hear any dropouts or distortions, but like I say, sonically, nothing spectacular. It's probably got Agfa tape in this, I'd imagine, but as a collectible, at least it's a usable collectible. And like I say, you're unlikely to ever see another one because just go on the internet, try and find another picture of this cassette. Mm. But yeah, at least it's not a Type 0, and that's a good thing. Now, let's move over to the smiley face. What a, I love that. That is fun. It's just so fun. It looks fantastic. It's a very nice, thick, heavy shell, this. Very nice, thick, heavy shell. This is it. This is not an audio file cassette, thank goodness. This is for people that enjoy fun in the hobby. So let's see if it actually sounds as good as the DBSI Memorex. I'm sure it will because it's the same cassette, but let's see how it goes. So this next one is called, oh dear, this next one's called Cats Searching for the Truth. This should be interesting. I hope it's better than the Bleeding Bird Therapist. Anyhow, Cats Searching for the Truth. Let's enjoy this. Hmm. Thank you. 
yeah that made a really nice copy all the treble was there all the bass was there like I say the hiss was a main difference but I'm actually starting to fall for this cassette I think this cassette is very endearing I am really liking this because like I say I don't know if you can see but can, the shell is very thick it's a look how thick the shell is on this one it's a very thick sturdy shell that looks fantastic and it performs great yeah I really like this one now let us go over to this one which has the very dark tape in it I'm going to crank this I'm going to I'm going to start this off at the same level because all these um all these tunes they don't seem normalized they're at different levels so I'm going to start it off at the same level as the uh, screamer but if it's about three I'm going to try and crank this one up a bit let's see if we can push it to maybe plus five plus seven see how that pans out okay that's calibrated good right this one is called point green get down hmm Okay, let's crank this a bit. Yeah, so very black tape in this. I could say five to seven there for a cheap entry level tape. Yeah, this performed really well. I could say at this point, you, you just think they were using up any remnants he had knocking around. And you can never really be sure of what's in this, but that is very black for a tight one. And he took it, like I say, the main difference between the source and the tape on this was the hiss. This is quite hissy. But if it's cobalt doped, you've got to expect that. But again, took five to seven without any noticeable distortion. Very impressive performer. And it looks great. Yeah, I like this one. And now the final one, this little tape, which I think looks amazing. Look at that. It's so pretty and so different and kooky. Love it. Never had a bad LG or gold star. So let's see if this one is going to wreck this reputation. So I'm going to leave this at the same sort of levels as the Memorex we've just had because again I think there's some cobalt doping going on here we'll play it loud record it hot and if it starts to distort I guess I'll just turn it down right and this tune you know what I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use another one of these uh, yeah I'm not gonna use another one of these guitar ones because the, yeah they are showing dynamic range but they're a bit poor really I'm gonna play one which uh, I used the other week it's called arpeggi synth so let's have a listen to that
Okay, let's crank it up a bit. Okay, that run a bit hotter than I wanted it to there, but it handled it. Say, so, very black tape again. Great looks, great sound. Yeah, this is a little beauty. Uh, I like this one a lot, a lot. Okay, so I'd like to thank Tony Cruz of Cassette Comeback Canada, and that can be found right here, being at canada.cassettecomeback.com, in case you're wondering, for sending me these cassettes to have a test. He's got all of these in stock. I have some of these in stock. He did send me a few for uh, our European customers, but like I say, if you want to buy a good few of them, check out Tony's store over in Canada. But it's always nice to get stuff that I've never seen before. And how do I rank them? Well, unsurprisingly, this one comes bottom of the bunch, even though this is the most expensive cassette of the lot. Again, if you've got a Type 3 deck, you probably make a lot better recording on them than I did. But because I haven't got any decks with Type 3 settings on it, it just didn't sound as good as the others. But the important thing is, it looks good. It's... Uh, Made in the USA, it does work, it hasn't shed. I'm gonna guess, like I say, that this has got Agfa ferrochrome tape in it, but as a collectible, there's few which are rarer or more obscure than this. Fourth place, I'm gonna put the standard magnetics. Again, a bit like the Akai, it's one for you collectors. Because, like I say, you cannot find any more references of this. But this isn't an amateur maker set. I believe this is probably from the late 70s. I believe it's got Agfa tape in it. And it does sound good. But you're going to get this because, basically, to say you have one. Because they're just so rare. Now, the next ones were quite tricky. In third place, I'm going to put the Memorex DB. Why, even though I believe this is super ferric, in fact, these holes, thinking about it, they look like the same holes that uh, you find in some of the Bush cassettes and some of the BBC branded cassettes. So it says made in China. I think they all probably came from the same place. It could be forward in Hong Kong more than anything that, of course, you know, Hong Kong became China in 1997, so maybe that's why they're saying China as opposed to Hong Kong. But I think these all came from forward. And this demonstrates something which I think is really interesting and good about the end of cassettes. Because as the shells got worse, the tape got better. Because look how black this tape is. I think this is a bona fide super ferric, and they were just using up what they could at the end. Or the formulations were just getting better while the shells were getting worse. So this performs superbly, and I think is a real value for money, Super Ferric, a very under the radar cassette. Right, in second place, this was a tricky one, but I'm going to put the Screamer. This I don't believe is a Super Ferric, I think the tape in this is most probably going to be SKC LX tape, but it performed really well. As good as a D, as good as a HF, as good as a UR. You know, it performed really well, 
but it's a great looking cassette. It's so endearing. It's amazing what a slip sheet can do and a bit of thought. They look great. They're a lot of fun. They sound good, but the shell, this is, like I said, I'll do it again. I don't know if you can see how thick the actual shell is. This is such a thick, heavy and rigid clear shell. It's beautiful. It's so well made. That's a lot of fun. I, I'm going to see if I can get some more of these off Tony for myself because uh, they're great tapes to give to people. And then in first place, the LG SHP. Again, loads of fun, different coloured hubs, different coloured rollers, but a bona fide super ferret this. It took levels that I shouldn't have given it. In fact, you know, she just shouldn't have done that. It, the shell isn't quite as good as a screamer, but it, it just looks so pretty and together. It's so clear, so colourful. Yeah, I really like that one. So that's how I rank them. So I hope you enjoyed this little diversion into some strange cassettes from Canada. Like I say, don't forget to check out cassettecomebackcanada.com. And other than that, do stay safe. It's going to eventually get better. It's got to get better. They're starting to relax stuff here in the UK, but I think for safety's sake, I'm going to stay at home a bit longer while I can, because you never know. We don't want this second spike. But do the things that make you happy. Record more tapes, spend time with your loved ones, chat online, do some video conferences. That's the best way of doing it. So stay safe, and until next time, please like and subscribe, and happy taping. Bye-bye.